great hair day today. <laughs> it's a little different today. It's looking good. Thank looking you. good. Uh, and I'm not just saying that. Okay, who's lost in God? Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come back and I will take you to be with me that you may also be where I am, that you may know the place to where I'm going. Welcome to church. I just encourage you guys, wherever you are, just to, uh, to worship with us today. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Jesus, the name above 
every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live feel, oh, we live feel Holy, holy, there is no one like you There is none besides you Open up my eyes Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me
darkness will break, but I'll keep on singing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah, nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade, darkness will break, but I'll keep on singing your praise. Oh, nothing can take my hallelujah, nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade, darkness will break, and I'll keep on singing.
This is a time in the service that I really look forward to, and that is taking communion together. I just want to encourage you, if you haven't gotten the communion elements, to, to run and grab you know, some bread and grab some juice, and to really make this time special, and to serve your children if you have a family that, that's home. In John 3, 16 is one of the most basic scriptures, and it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And you know, there's, there's two elements to a gift. There's the giving, but then to complete it, there has to be the receiving. And that's what makes the gift complete. It's not enough that God gave, but that we have to receive his love. And so when Jesus gives this command in taking communion, he says, do this often in remembrance of me. It's a time to not only recognize what he did, but it's a time for us to literally receive him. And we receive him symbolically through the bread, through the body, through the blood that cleanses us. So let this be a sacred time as we take communion. And so Father, we just give thanks for the body of Christ. And you gave as a gift your son so that we could have life. And Father, not only do we remember that, but we receive the son into our lives. And we give thanks that through his body, that by his stripes, we are healed. And we look to you as the healer from any sickness, disease, and injury. And I proclaim that over every home, every household that is watching and partaking, that Father, we truly give thanks and declare and receive your healing that by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, as we take this juice, we receive the blood of Christ and its forgiveness, that it, there's no guilt or shame or condemnation, that you keep no record of wrong, but every day your mercies are new. So Father, we give thanks for the blood of Christ that gives us life and life abundantly. Welcome Victory Life Church. It's good to be together again. Who is ready to get their church on? 
You know, I'm excited uh, to be together. I can't wait until we can be together in person, but I love to connect with you through this means in the meantime. If you're a first time guest, a special welcome to you. My name is Pastor James. We're really glad that you could join us for this service. Uh, In fact, we would love to connect with you and answer any questions you have about Victory Life Church. There's a connect button that's popping on the screen if you're watching the live stream, just click that uh, and then we can answer any questions you may have. If you're watching on one of the other platforms or a rebroadcast, you can just text to the number shown on the screen, connect, and we can answer any questions you may have about Victory Life. We would love to hear about your experience of joining us in this service. We are excited as, uh, as we celebrate this weekend. This is Memorial Weekend. And so it's a time that we just want to pause and give thanks and honor all those that have served our country For those especially, remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice and gave their lives for our freedom. If you're in active duty reserves or a veteran, uh, we just want to say thank you. Thank you to all those families, too, that have sacrificed as, as family members have served our nation. So a special thank you and a blessing, we pray, upon you and your home, and we're just glad we could be together. Um... Another thing we want to celebrate also is we're expanding our reach uh, into the community and around the world. And so we want to announce this. In the past, people had to come to our website. They had to find us to discover uh, the ministry. And now we're going to actually branch out. You're watching now. Some are watching for the first time on Facebook Live and also YouTube. Now, because we're going to be expanding into these platforms, that means that you can literally, uh, after the streaming is, you can watch this anytime. And so for our Saturday night crowd, we want to encourage you to join us Sunday morning. And if that's not convenient for you, well, the good news is we're going to be able to post it not only on our website now, but we're going to be able to post it on Facebook and YouTube, and you can catch it anytime that is convenient for you. And so thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. That took some resources and some investment and equipment in, in order to expand our reach. So just a special thank you as we celebrate that. And a special welcome to everybody watching on Facebook and YouTube. We're glad you could join the house. All right, well, if you have your Bibles ready, let's turn or click them on to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. There's some other verses we're going to use as well. But, you know, in this series we called Beyond Quarantine, and that is really what is the new normal, what's life going to look like. A lot of people have a lot of anxieties, a lot of fears, and this verse And this chapter is particularly relevant because Timothy is facing great uncertainty just like you and I are today. Timothy is a young leader that is starting a church and there's no books written on it, no universities how to do it, no leadership classes. The church is something new. He has uh, challenges and issues that he's never encountered nor has the world encountered before. He has nothing to draw from. And it's very similar to where you and I are at today as we face this pandemic that in our lifetime, we've never seen anything like it. And there's uncertainty that causes anxiety, questions of what will a new normal be like when this thing's over? When will this thing be over? What what type of work will I have? What, you know, is this thing contained? Is it gone? You know, all these uncertain questions, there's nothing we can reference in our life to give us the answers. And that in itself can build anxiety. And this is exactly where Timothy was at. He had nothing to draw from. He couldn't, he couldn't fill in the blanks or predict what the next day was going to hold. And in the midst of that anxiety, he was given this letter from his mentor. And this is going to be one of Paul's last letter he writes before he's executed. And in there, as Timothy has this fear and anxiety that is starting to set in and control his life, these are the words that he gets encouraged to get focused and back on track. And, he's, and Paul says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, he says, Timothy, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. And so each week we've been taking an element of this. And the first week was we talked about the spirit of fear and how it can bring division in ourselves that separates us from God as Adam was afraid and he hid from God, but it also separates relationships with one another. And he says, Timothy, God didn't give you that spirit spirit of fear, but the spirit in this sentence is 
the, is the topic. And so he goes, he didn't give you the spirit of fear, but he did give you the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. He's talking about the Holy Spirit and in the Holy Spirit that God has given Timothy, that God makes available to you and I today, in that spirit is power. It is love and it is sound mind. And so uh, as we take a look at the power that the Holy Spirit gives, that it actually gives you power to move things in your life and to deal with challenges. And Jesus himself relied on the power of the Holy Spirit that is being mentioned and offered here to Paul. Jesus himself had to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to face the challenges. The Father gave him the Holy Spirit when he was baptized and then he, with the Holy Spirit, he goes into the desert and he faces all the temptations and trials that the devil throws at him, but he was able to overcome it. Why? Because he had this spirit of power with him and you and I have that spirit today. And so he tells Timothy, Timothy, spirit of fear God didn't give you, but he did give you a spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, and it is powerful, and it is also love. And so here, here's what we want to look at today is we want to unpack the spirit of love, the, the Holy Spirit, how it gives the power of love in our lives, and, and what a difference that can make. How do we apply that to our lives? In all this, here, here's what he's reminding Timothy. The Holy Spirit isn't a thing, but it's a someone. Power is, is someone. Love is God. Love is someone. Love isn't something. It's the Holy Spirit. It, it is the, the avenue in which God puts his love into our hearts and into the world. And, and so here's what he's reminding Timothy when he gives this sentence. Because Paul is really an expert on love. He writes about love to all the different churches. And he's reminding Timothy, son, you're not alone. You're, you're, you're tending to react to a situation as if you were alone and you had to do this on your own. But Paul is saying, Timothy, you're not alone. God has given you the Holy Spirit, the helper. You have a spirit on your side that is powerful and full of God's love that conquers all things. And, and this verse is tied to another letter that the same author wrote, Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans 8.15. He says this, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And so here's the first thing, in order to embrace, to receive, and to see the power of God's love move through your life, it is to be reminded of this. Any challenge you're facing, this challenge in particular, if you receive Jesus Christ, you're not facing this challenge alone. That, that you're not an orphan, and an orphan has to figure things out for himself. An orphan has to tackle and, and, and take care of things, but, but when we're received as a son and as a daughter. He's reminded them, you don't need to be fearful because you've got somebody that's on your side and he's powerful and he's full of love and that's the Holy Spirit. And so Paul is describing this, but he uses a particular word to describe the type of power. Because even in the English language, we use the same word love, but we all know in the, in the, in the context, it means different things such as, I love pizza, I love puppies, you know, but I also love Jesus. It's the same word, but how many of you realize it, it's to different degrees? I know I love coffee and pizza and it's right up there, but no. I mean, it, it is the same word, but it's completely different in meaning. Paul clarifies the type of love that comes with only the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Greek have uh, four different words they use for love. But it's interesting, Paul's very specific in the type that he chooses in this sentence to describe. And so there's eros love, and this is where the Greeks get the word erotica we draw from, and, and it's kind of a lust love. It, it's, uh, it, it's where the god Cupid is used. You know, what's interesting is uh, eros love is mentioned nowhere in the Bible, in the New Testament. Uh, the other is a stergo love, and this is a love that comes with a condition. It's a love that we're kind of celebrating this weekend. It's a, like a love for country. There's a pride, but there's strings attached. You know, it's because of what it represents, what it stands for. 
um, but, but it's a love for country. Then there's a phileo love, and that is a brotherly love. That's a friendship, a mutual. But again, there's conditions stacked on that. We have broken relationships all the time. And so it, there's a friendship as long as there's a mutual agreement on certain things. There's conditions to it. But Paul is describing the power of the Spirit using none of these words. But he uses the word agape in the Greek. And only God is capable of agape love. And, and it's, it comes from the Father himself. It is a supernatural love that is God and it is from God. And therefore, as much as you have a passion and a love for someone or something, it cannot equal the depth, or more importantly, the power that comes from the love of God. Human beings are only capable of experiencing in and of themselves in the flesh the first three levels. And those three levels can be deep, they can, they can be intimate, but they lack the power of the fourth one. That fourth one only comes when you know Jesus Christ. Because it is through the Holy Spirit that is our helper that empowers us with a special type of power called love, agape love that is given. And Paul is reminding Timothy, you're trying to react in, the, in your own, but God has given you this special ability that only comes from those who believe, only comes through the Holy Spirit. It is a power that moves things, moves people, and it's a love that transcends all understanding. It's a love that never fails. And, and so he begins to lay this, this out to him. Love, agape love, God's love isn't something, it is someone. It is the Holy Spirit. He embodies it, it only comes from him. It's impossible to achieve it without the Spirit of God because it is the Spirit of God. And so he's given Timothy these things, he's reminding Timothy, you're not alone, you have a helper. And so here's where I wanna unpack on how is God's love different than the other three types of love that we're capable of experiencing apart from God. How is God's love completely different? And there's a beautiful illustration of this in John chapter eight, verse three. Jesus, uh, it, uh, Jesus has an encounter with scribes and Pharisees. And this is the story or the event of the adulterous woman that's brought out to Jesus. And it says, then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commands us that, we should, uh, that she should be stoned. But what do you say? They said this testing him. Their motive was to test him. And as they, uh, they said this testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not even hear them. In other words, he's just ignoring them. And they're still talking and he's ignoring them. The woman caught in adultery is right here and he's writing things and as he's writing things, they begin to leave one by one. And as they begin to leave, uh, he, he finally looks up and he says to the, to the woman caught in adultery, because um, they, they, they wanted to stone her to death, but now they've all gone. And he looks to her and says, uh, who's here to excuse you? And in his response to them, let him without sin cast the first stone. And that was the challenge. And so they all, they all started to leave after that statement. And then finally he goes, who's left to accuse you? And she goes, no one. And he goes, then neither do I. But then this is what he says, and this is the agape love. As he says this, then neither do I. Now go and sin no more. Another translation says this, neither do I. Now leave your lifestyle and sin no more. You see, agape love isn't accepting. Agape love confronts and challenges. All the other kind of loves want to punish and put a condition on the past, but agape love seeks to heal, restore, and move the relationship forward. We always say this at Victory Life, we don't care. It's not so much where you come from, but it's where you wanna go. You see, we all have a past and the, the devil wants to use those different kind of love that we're familiar with to, to beat us up with shame, guilt, and condemnation that, that we need to be punished for the mistakes that we've made. But, but here's what is unique 
It is supernatural and it only comes through the love of God, that agape love, that power that looks to heal and restore, but it is not accepting and compromising at the same time. That's the power of it. He doesn't accept her where she's at uh, or accept the lifestyle choice, but he accepts her where she's at. But through the power and the love and belief in the individual says, you can do better. Go and make better choices. Go and sin no more. He's telling Timothy at this time, you have this spirit of love that overcomes the greatest challenges that you're facing in your life and the people around you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is how this love is different. Paul is now writing, this is, Paul's the same one penning this. I told you he was kind of an authority on the topic of love. And he's writing this to the church at Corneth. Now, this is a verse that if you've been to a wedding, you've heard this verse. This is the love chapter, they call it. But it's important to understand the audience it was written to and how it applies to our, ter- to our days today. Paul went to Corneth, and Corneth was really a very modern city. It was a city that was right on the harbor that, that did trading. It was out upon the trading route. So economically, this was a, a very prosperous city. There was a lot of, of retail and market and trading and buying, selling. Um, it, it was a sophisticated culture. And, and because it was a consumer-based culture, there's a lot of similarities between Corneth and even the United States. And so it was a wealthy uh, commerce uh, culture that was there. Now, Paul goes there, sets up the church. He leaves, and after he's left, he's getting letters that they're not doing so well. In fact, there's some pretty big struggles. And I'm setting all this up so you can see the power in this next verse that Paul is gonna use, love, and to show that the power of love can overcome all things. Now, in the church, he has to correct them. He has to rebuke them because in there, there's divisions. And there's divisions because Apollos has come, Peter's come, and people are starting to to follow man, and they're listening to the voice of man rather than chasing after the spirit of God. And so just like today, we have a culture that is so divided because we're listening to the different voices that are out there. And it's even coming into the body of Christ and dividing the body of Christ. Some people listen to this news, some people listen to this news, some people listen to this guy, some people listen to this guy. And that's what was going on at the Corneth. And Paul says this, to overcome all this division, you need to listen to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You need to follow Christ. That's what holds us together. It is the blood of Christ. And so he uses the love of God and the Holy Spirit to overcome all these divisions that are facing at court. The other thing he's got to address is there sexual sins issues going on. And, and, and people are just accepting of other people. People are going to the temple uh, and, and sleeping with the prostitutes. Uh, gender identity is not a new cultural issue. Homosexuality and, uh, and all sorts of sexual sin was going on in that church. They were having to deal with that. And people were just accepting it, thinking that was grace, that was the love of God. But as we saw Jesus, when he confronted the adulterous woman, he says, agape love doesn't accept people in the sin. Agape love wants to see people set free from the bondage of sin. And so he begins to explain to the church at Corinth, man, this is what love is. Love isn't accepting somebody's lifestyle. Love is believing in them to chase after the things of God to be set free from a lifestyle. And so they were chasing and listening to the voices of men. There was sexual sins. And then there was just freedoms people were taking, entitlements people were taking. It was offending other people. And they were like, well, I have that freedom to do this. And you know what's crazy? Uh, um, this issue with the mask is a divisive thing, isn't it? There's some people that go, I'm never gonna wear a mask. Okay, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of one of those. I I hate the mask. I'm just gonna say I hate the mask. Why? Because I'm a happy guy that likes to smile and I like to see your smile too. But because I have that freedom, I don't wanna use that if it's gonna offend somebody and, and I don't want to insist on my right. I have a right that if I don't want to, by God, I don't have to. Well, they were doing that when it came to the food that was offered to the 
the gods and the people in Christ were going, those gods aren't nothing, that's just wood, that's just fake, this is good food. God created all things holy, we can eat this. Other people were offended by it. And Paul was going, look, don't use the freedom and the liberty you have. Don't think that's more important and value that more than the feelings of the people around you. If it causes them to stumble, have a higher regard for them than your own freedom. And so look, I, whether you're a mass person or not a mass person, I know this, when I'm around my family, I, don't, I, I wanna honor them. I value the relationship I have with them more than my liberty over a mask. Paul is using this when it comes to other issues. I'm just using this one because we can relate to it. But Paul is using the power of God's love that just says, here's the heart that only the Holy Spirit can give you because selfishness wants to have it your way or the highway and prove points and make points and win arguments and all that. And he goes, no, 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 that, that, that's, that's not the spirit God gave you, Timothy, James. But God did give you a spirit of love and you'll have a higher regard for other people than you do your own rights even. No greater love than this than somebody that'll lay down their life for another. And so then Paul gives this definition of love as, as he kind of addresses these things in the church that are in our lives today. And, and, and we find broken relationships and, and why can't, why doesn't love seem to last? And I'm explaining all this because the verse, it's, gonna, it's just gonna tell you the power of his love. And it says, love is patient and love is kind. I love it, it's both passive and it's forward moving. It's patient, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm not gonna bring the hammer down, but I'm gonna move you forward at the same time. I'm not gonna condemn you, but, but sin no more. I'm gonna love you where you're at, but I'm gonna believe there's better for you. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. You know, it's important to see, especially when we have the Holy Spirit in us, because it's in us doesn't mean it's manifested through us. I won't say that one again. Just because we have the Holy Spirit in us doesn't necessarily mean it's always manifested through us. And that's what's happening with Timothy, and it's a choice that we have. We can either rely on the flesh, defend ourselves like an orphan, or we can remember that we have a helper and we can choose the Spirit. This is why Paul is in this tug of war all the time, man. Uh, it seems the things I don't wanna do, I do, and the things I should do, I don't. There's this choice that we're always making between the flesh and God's Spirit. So it doesn't dishonor anything, doesn't dishonor others. You know, I've got to check myself because there's sometimes I want to post something on social media and I, here's what I tell myself. It's just going, it's, this is going to just feel good if I can just say this and I can just bam, put this in their face. And, and you know what? You know it's not the fruit of the Spirit because after you post something stupid, you don't feel any better, do you? You post it and you thought it would make you feel better because you made your point. but it doesn't bring peace and it doesn't bring joy. And Paul is saying, you know what? Just, it, it doesn't dishonor anybody. God's love, the first three kinds of love, those will dishonor. But the love of the Holy Spirit that you've been given, that won't dishonor other people. It, it doesn't mean we have to agree and accept, but there's a way to do that in love. And it says, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. And I love this, verse eight, love never fails. And I had to explain all this because we see sometimes in life and it seems that life doesn't match what God's truth is. And you hear this phrase, love never fails. And you say, man, I, I see love failing all the time but it's important to realize that it's God's love that never fails. That agape love that only comes from Him. And He's telling Timothy, Timothy, it will never fail you. It will never let you down. If you will die to it, you will see it move into your life. You can trust it. And here's the last point I'm gonna close with. How do we, how do we choose God's love? If you've accepted Jesus Christ, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, but you still have to choose the power of God's love. You, you've got to resist yourself 
and you've got to choose to walk in that. So how do I release that? Because this is what Timothy is struggling with. T Timothy's ready to throw half the people out of his church. <laughs> He's frustrated. But how does he tap into the power of God's love? Here, if you're taking notes, we release God's love when we surrender to it. When we surrender to Christ, when we surrender to God's love, it, there's a tug of war. And here's the thing, the Holy Spirit will not dominate, but it will serve if we surrender. It is a helper. The Holy Spirit doesn't bring bondage, it brings freedom. And in Luke 9, 23, it says this. It says, then he said to them all, if any, and these are the words of Jesus, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And this is the word I don't like, daily. Every single day. <laughs> you know, it's not a one and done deal. Every single day, I have to choose to deny myself and to pick up the cross. I love what Jimmy Evans says, and, and, he, and he says this, he goes, there are two supernatural beings that play over your life. One is trying to kill you and the other is trying to destroy you. You see, God's trying to kill you and kill you to self. That, and Paul says it this way, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. The, the greatest freedom Jesus gave me is freedom from myself. There's a dying to self that has to take place. And, and, and John said it this way, there's gotta be less of me, so there's more of him. And when we surrender, when we die to ourselves, when we override in our flesh what we wanna do to get even or to, to take matters into our own hands and, and act like Peter and just take out the sword and just start lopping ears off and trying to deal with situations on our own, we're reminded that God's love, it never, ever, fails if we'll just surrender to it and trust it. Now that's a hard thing to be able to trust in it. And so we begin to see when Paul gives these words in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. You know, he finishes it by saying, in all things do in love but it's really the verse 13 just before it that just shows you how powerful it is and how difficult it is to walk in God's love, to trust in God's love, to be empowered in God's love. He says this, watch, stand fast in faith, be brave and be strong. And once he said, be brave, be strong, stand fast, he says, let all things you do, do in love. And that's my prayer for you today. That you take that kind of love into every relationship you have. For your marriages, I pray for marriages to be restored, to be healed. It, it, it takes a lot of strength. You've got to steadfast. You got to be strong. You got to be brave. During this crisis, this pandemic, you, you've you got to take the words of Paul and says, you know, be on watch. Watch what your heart is 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 doing, watch what your mind and your mouth wants to say, but to be on watch, to stand fast in your faith, to do what I know I, I, I need to do, what I'm supposed to do, what I'm called to do, to stand fast in your faith, to be strong because it's not easy. Timothy, God has given you a helper, he has given you power and he has given you love and his love never fails. I wanna pray with you. Because we are created and designed to fail. <laughs> now just hear me out for a moment. Meaning this, we lack what it takes to overcome. But the good news is that God the Father gave his son Jesus Christ so that none should perish, but all should have everlasting life. But even beyond that, he then gave us the Holy Spirit through his son Jesus Christ to empower us to face the challenges, to have the power to forgive when we don't have in our own ability to forgive, to have the power to trust and to face these challenges. That's the good news. 
And I want you to live in that. If you receive Christ, I want you to choose this day whom you will follow. I want you to die to yourself and to pick up the cross. I wanna remind you that as you struggle with fear and anxiety, just like Paul reminded Timothy, God didn't give you that spirit of fear, but of power and love. But maybe you haven't even made it that far in life. There's one question that every heart has to have answered. The question is this, is my heart right with God? When you hear this question, if you're sitting there or watching this and going, I, I don't know, I try to be a good person. I try to do the right thing. Listen, trying hard to be good doesn't make you right with God. Just believing there is a God isn't enough to make you right with God. But Romans says this, those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And what that verse means, there's gotta be a defining moment in your life that, that you surrendered. Remember we said the way to release God's love into your life is you gotta surrender to it. You've gotta call out to him and say, Jesus, come into my life. And if you've never done that, this is your moment right now and it's gonna last a lifetime. I'm telling you, you can't make it without him. The good news is he knows that and he wants to give you his helper, his Holy Spirit. He wants to give you his son. And so I'm gonna pray on the count of three. And there's a button that's popping up now if you're watching the live stream that uh, a button that just says raise hand. It's important to declare him as your Lord and Savior. And so I'm gonna ask you to just click that button to say, include me in that prayer. That's all it is. But, but that takes courage, that takes strength in and of itself. It, it shows a sign of surrender. When you raise your hand, that means I give up. And so I love that the button says, raise hand. I give up, Jesus, come into my life. I wanna to know today, I wanna to live in that power that, that you provide me to live my life with. So click that button right now, because on the count of three, we're gonna go into a prayer. I don't want you to miss this. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook or one of the reposts, there, I just want you to text LIFE, because we wanna connect with you, we wanna pray for you. But it's a commitment that says, I'm in. It's a sign of surrender that's just not in my head, but in my action, in my heart. And so here it is, on the count of three, I'm just gonna ask you to click that button, raise hand if you haven't done it already. One, two, right now, click it. Include me in that prayer, raise hand. Because Romans 10, nine says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, it says you will be saved. And that's what we're gonna do right now. You don't have to live in fear any longer because he wants, he's given you his son, Jesus Christ. And so if you've clicked that button, I want you to pray this prayer out loud. And you can pray this prayer anytime. But I want you to pray this prayer out loud, literally. And just pray, oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe you died on the cross and that you rose again. Father, forgive me for all that I've done wrong. And I choose to forgive all others. Come into my life today and forever, I am yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us at Church Online today. We hope you were blessed and encouraged through the message and the worship. You know, you are truly making a difference in our community. Your giving is changing lives, not only in the community, but right here in our church. And we wanna just encourage you to continue giving faithfully. You can do that through the app with a simple give button, and you can also give online. One of the ways that your generosity and faithfulness is making a difference is through our recently launched Impact YouTube channel. If your students haven't subscribed, we wanna encourage you to subscribe now. Hundreds of views have happened online through your faithfulness and generosity, so thank you so much. We wanna pray with you. Please don't stand alone in this season. Our staff and directors are standing by in a live chat room. If you're watching live, you can click right on that button so that we can pray with you. You can also text PRAY to the number that's on your screen. We're so excited to have got to spend this weekend with you. We can't wait to see you again. Have a great week.
goodness, oh, Goose. Oh, I am so disappointed, Mav. Look at how Penny and Peter left our sneaky beaks lair. I know, me too, Goose. I thought we'd train those little sneaky beaks better than this. You know, if we just hadn't gotten back from our mission, this would really upset me. Oh, that's for sure, Goose. I'm so thankful that we discovered how to have God's peace no matter what happens. Gee, Mav, I'm having a hard time remembering everything we learned. Well, it all started when... Goose, what do you think? Oh, Mav, really? I've needed a spa day for such a long time, especially after so many missions lately. Me too, Goose. All that sneaking around? Well, Mav, I'd say I'm relaxed, but that day at the spa didn't bring me peace. I know, Goose. I mean, wow, my feathers are really shiny from that sunflower seed oil bath, but my heart is kind of empty. Well, at least we're rested. Wait, I have an idea. What is it, Goose? Well, when we play that video game, Mission Falcon, we always feel better. Oh yeah, Goose. That game has so many cool missions, I wonder if it will bring us peace if we go play it. Well, let's go check it out. such a great pilot. Thanks, Goose. Check out this move. Wow, you could have been a real jet fighter. Well, that was fun, but... But what, Mav? Well, I mean, don't get me wrong, but I don't feel God's peace after playing Mission Falcon. Oh, no, Mav. I'm sorry. I guess I don't know how to get peace after all. Yeah, me either. Wait. What, Mav? Did you figure it out? Well, what if we... No, that won't work. Oh, wait, I've got it. We always feel better when we go shopping for new spy gear. That's it, Mav. I'm sure we'll find God's peace that way. Let's go. Goose. What? We have. Arrived. Oh, spy the Mart. Mega Spy Mart. Yay, let's oh, go. Would you look at that? We're an action figure. Oh. Wow, Goose. Is that the Eagle Phantom 1000 Plus? I think it is with chopping action. No way. Let's get in and check it out. Chop. Oh, chop, my goodness. Chop. Just think of all the tunnels we can dig with this. I'm just dreaming about the driving this all over the place. All right, Goose, we better pay and get out of here. All right, let's go. You know, I'm starving. Well, you know me, Goose. When we get in that checkout line, I'm buying us some candy. All right, Goose, pick out whatever you want. I don't know, Mav. These snacks look great, but I've got my eye on that steak back there. Ooh, yeah, let's get a steak to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, Goose, I think we've got enough stuff. I know, Mav, but I still am just not feeling God's peace. I know, me either. What should we do, Mav? I don't know. Wait, remember the mission where we asked God for his Holy Spirit to help us? I think so. Was that when we crashed into that tree? Yeah, Goose, why don't we ask God how to get his peace? Hey, I've got my Bible with me, and we learned that one way to ask what God would do is to look in our Bibles and see what he taught us. Great idea, Goose. Oh, look at these verses, Mav. Philippians 4, 4 through 13. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which goes beyond anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. 
That's incredible, Goose. God just showed us how to have his peace. He said to pray or talk to him about everything. So, instead of trying to just have fun or get everything we want or have everyone do everything for us, we should just talk to God about it all? Yes, and when we do, he says that his peace will guard our hearts and minds. Goose, I'm so excited. Me too. Now, when we get mad or scared or upset, we know that we can just talk to God about it and he will protect us and fill us with his peace. I do remember now how to have peace. Good, Goose. Let's go ahead and talk to God right now about how upset we are about this mess. God, we are so upset with how the little sneaky beaks messed up our super secret lair. Please fill us with your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Goose. I, I feel better already. Yeah, me too, Mav. And, you know, looking at all these snacks, it's making me a little bit hungry myself. Well, nobody's stopping us. Let's get some snacks. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like having God's peace in our lives, Miss Terry. Hey, let's do our memory verse today. Did someone say memory verse? Hey, we sure did. Come on in, Miss Jillian. Woo. Hey, Miss Jillian. Pastor Tim, do you have your Bible? Uh, I think so. Whoa! Our memory verse is Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared for us in advance to do. Wow, that was awesome, Miss Jillian. Oh, that was so good. Thank you, Miss Jillian. You're welcome. I'm going to get me some more of those Cheetos. Pastor Tim. What? What are you doing? Oh, um, oh that's so stale, oh, Miss Terry. Oh, Pastor Tim. Did you really eat those old Cheetos? Uh, I, I gotta go. I'm not feeling too hot. Oh. Bye, guys. See you next week. Bye. Where's the bathroom?